It's October 21st, 2015. I'm Dana Durnford, also known as the Nuclear Proctologist.org, and you can find my videos and Fukushima presentations at Beautiful Girl Boy Dana on YouTube. And so, this week, uh, episode 7, and all the episodes this week, is about Japan's, and that, you know, we got to have a conversation about this. And the only way we can have a conversation is to come out and do these presentate. I call them presentations because we provide all the documentation as I'm talking in the background on the green screen. And that do, we we only do Fukushima, uh, the melted reactors. We do cover everything else on the planet, don't get me wrong. But Fukushima is the major event. This is the meteorite uh, that is coming at our planet in one context and that has already hit our planet in many, many, many of the other contexts. And so today I'm not going to have the video blurping in the background because yesterday we lost bandwidth repeatedly during the stream and we just can't have that. It's devastating uh, when the stream gets broken up, it's not coherent. And so yesterday was Star Wars uh, came out um, with their movie. And so everybody was downloading that throughout the entire internet. And so there was nets, uh, sites crashing, sites were inoperable, and the whole internet itself was dysfunctional, except unless you were trying to buy Star Wars um, memorabilia or Star Wars, the latest movie. And so that's an, uh, an inherent problem with live streams. If we have a big event, they'll steal the bandwidth from all over the place to accommodate the corporate person hood that is demanding it at that particular time. There's six major corporations. So it says now they're not receiving my stream, even though I'm not streaming a, a video on my other computer. Let's just hang on a second. I'm going to refresh that page. We'll get started. And so it's doing it again. I'll keep an eye on the conversation, just in case. And so I'll be looking back here periodically. Hopefully the stream streams normal. And I did, like I say, just to compensate in case there is a lot of bandwidth being used by the video. I'm not streaming a live video for the monitoring. But the comments on the inside is there. So Japan is devastated. And, you know, we've covered this extensively, the, uh, each of these episodes of the melted reactors in the beginning of the episodes. The first few episodes are reactor one and two for pilot. And then the first episode was Unit 3, second one was Unit 4, fourth one was Unit 5 and 6. And it probably wouldn't hurt me to show you some pictures when I'm saying that like I just claimed I would. This is Unit 1, we covered that in the pilot episode. And we also covered Unit 2, these are 100% meltdown, melt-throughs, melts out. And this is the worst you can have happened. This is Unit 3, and this is the worst that could have happened. And this is Unit 4, and this is the worst that you could have happened. And Unit 5 and Unit 6 coming up. This is Unit 5 and Unit 6. And, they, and I covered that in the third episode 3. We covered uh, the jet streams and the disposition from the fallout. And I got a little picture I can put up there. Blah, blah, blah. And so... Unit 5 and Unit 6 uh, were all covered. Uh, I just repeated myself. So then we covered what well, the jet streams, the dispersals that were modeled by many major institutions, France, Nor Norway, Switzerland, Canada, United States. All modeled the plume, recognized the plume. But in our medias, we have just two narratives, and they both come from Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, or Ken Busler. Dear and Jay Collin from UVic in Canada, University of Victoria. These are 100% crazies. And, and UVic in particular, Jay Collin, up until the end of 2013, when we pounded and grounded him and shamed him, he was still saying there was no melted reactors in Japan, but if there was, it'd be pretty serious. And so these are the spokespeople for North America, just these two individuals. Neither one is a nuclear scientist, both. Neither one is a, new, a marine biologist, both are marine chemists chemist 
And so they picked the perfect one who wouldn't be a conflict. Because anybody asked him, did he test the algae or test the sediment or test the for bioaccumulation in the microscopic or the marine world itself, they would say, well, I'm actually a marine biologist, but there is no scientist out there testing it. That's why we exist, and we've got to get water samples, and you got to give us $600 per sample, 360000 a month. And in their video, they tell you, be careful, you don't get any water samples. Uh, you don't get any water um, seaweed or sediment in your water samples. So... Here we are, we're moved up to day seven, or episode seven, which is really episode eight. <laughs> and we're talking about Japan all week. Now Japan, of course, was right under, uh, in fact, the first, now you know temporary services, have anybody here watching this ever worked for a temporary, temporary service? Where you call them up and get a day job? Okay. Well, the people that work for these, uh, they pick out certain people for certain jobs. So a lot of the, you know, dangerous work won't go to the employee of the company because that might have to pay out insurance down the road. So they hire a temporary employee to come in and work for a few hours or a few days. And but these people are uneducated, and they're they're only motivated by paying their bills each month. And so they're they're living on the fringe. And so what Japan done was put out a call. Uh, to send us people who don't mind dying. And just to demonstrate how severe this was, here's a little clip. Result. If a problem later occurs, they can say, well, the people <coughs> on site, the workers made their own arbitrary decision to do this. It's not our fault. Another example, immediately after the first hydrogen explosion, TEPCO gave out an order uh, to, or uh, a request uh, to all of these um, uh, dispatching, labor dispatching companies, and they said, send us people who don't mind dying. At that time, uh, it was really very much a panic situation, perhaps, but um, normally when you enter any area where there might be possible uh, radiation exposure, you're always supposed to be issued a special uh, kind of uh, booklet. Or, or that, uh, as a result. And so that was the translator. Uh, Kate was saying she really liked my video last night. At the end of it, I asked the new prime minister you see behind me, Justin Trudeau, to start filtering Canadian water. And I ask that because, I'll just find that right smack. It's always sitting somewhere where I'm not looking. I got so much on my computer, just in this program. But as our drinking water standards for Canada, now we have all these radionuclides from Japan. But for thousands of millenniums, it's only 0 0.05 becquels a liter, but now we have thousands of becquels per liter. And a single atom will give you a cancer. This is a real event in North America. But like I was saying, Canada would have hired a fruit fly at this point of the game. Anything but Stephen Harper. And so this is how they do it to you. You hired Obama because you would hire anything but George Bush again, right? For the Americans. And so running into the... Not just cancer, how low doses of radiation causes heart diseases and strokes, and, and there's also 1,800 autoimmune deficiencies, Alzheimer's, dementia, diabetes, and you know, cardiovascular is the major ones, and, and, and different aspects of that. Child risk of cancer from radiation is 10 to 100 times higher than an adult who had the same exposure. 10 to 100 times, because the child's volume is very tiny when they drink a liter, when we drink a liter, we got a much more distribution. It sequesters in your organs, your bone, in the mass of the body. Officials sharply rise radiation levels for residents to get iodine pills after the meltdown. And so I already covered this headline when we were talking about children. But I just, some of these headlines are going to repeat for each episode, for sure, that are important. And so they raised the limits in Japan 75 times higher than the World Health Organization, which is... Um, arguably much eviler than TEVCO. And trust me, TEVCO is as twisted as you get. Uh, and so the whole country was radiated and any kind of uh, numbers they were going to find, they put the numbers so high, they were hoping, they were hoping, they didn't know for sure, but they were hoping the numbers were so high that the children wouldn't get any help. And so it's a, these people have a mental illness in Japan. 
Gunderson said, we're now finding that girls are having as much as twice as many thyroid lumps as boys, and girls are much more, particularly young girls, are much more susceptible. Now, in women, we, we see studies, uh, and I know Chris Busby done a study in parallel with other major scientists, of, because that's when you hear time about, but you don't hear the other scientists talking about it, but Chris, Chris talks about it. And so six times more likely for women to get breast cancer if they live near, near a nuclear power plant. And so once again, these two studies really uh, coalesce each other. Professor, clear that low-level contamination is probably more dangerous than a single dose. So living in a, in a man-made, because like normal natural radiation, like a banana or a potato chip or, or anything like that, your food or the water that you drink, or even my clothing, got potassium-40, everything around you right now, you can't touch anything without having potassium-40 in it. And if some of that potassium-40 was to rub off and get on your finger, your body would off-gas the same amount it can't hold anymore if you were to absorb that stuff that was on your finger. Just because it's on your finger don't mean your body's going to off-gas it. But if you try to absorb it, and you can, when you eat food, you absorb more potassium-40 into the body. But it's this phenomenon that the body is called homeostasis. And so grasshoppers with deformed wings, gray eyes, not reds, Birds with abnormal sperms, strange tumors. What's anything? Any tumor is strange. Say, but strange. It's just the way they refer to, to these things. Sometimes makes you wonder. Infant deaths were up in B.C. Canada after Fukushima, and so children are affected. Like this, I put that in there just to give you context. And uh, don't be fooled by paid industry consultants. Low doses of ionizing. Now, they all say potassium-40 is an ionizing radiation that's in every aspect of your life. But the stuff that went through the chain reaction was bombarded with neutrons and has an extra electron attached to it of the nuclei, nucleus, the atom. And so this extra electron made the atom a little bit heavier. It gave it a new atomic weight. Now, so if that was an atom of gold or silver or lead or anything else... Now it has an extra weight. It's not like the other gold atoms. Now it has this extra electron from a chain reaction bombardment. Now, normally if we come in contact with the typical trace metals on the planet, our body uh, knows what to do with it. Our body knows how to handle it. Our body has, through genetic superior selection, you know, invisible ways to us anyway, but the body deals with it and excretes it, etc., etc., or utilizes it. But when man-made radiation gets into your body, your body can't utilize it. But it does try to. It'll treat cesium like potassium. Your body treats potassium-40 in your muscles. And, 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 and it treats it like calcium, like strontium-90 is, is an easy one to mention because it's so popular one to hear about sometimes. That one is treated like calcium, so it sequesters in your bones. And so when this comes through your country like Japan or anywhere else in Canada, the United States, and the entire planet, your body, as it intakes it, treats it like the natural stuff that it was originally, but now it has an extra, extra electron attached to it. Now your body now treats it as a foreign object because your body does not recognize it. And so that's how your body defends itself. So when you ingest it, your body, say if you get the flu, your body sends it white blood cells to deal with it and to fight it and kill it off. And then at the same time though, it's displacing oxygen molecules. So that's why you, you feel weak when you when you get the flu and you feel lazy and everything else. and Or with pathogens or viruses. That's how your body treats it. So when you get one of these atoms, just a single atom in your body, your body attacks it relentlessly. It's, think about the ants that are... Think about the ants uh, that are always marching. You know, you, you, at some point in your life, you look down, you watch this string of ants, and they, and they bore a hole in the ground, literally, around a path on the ground. And these ants are all two strings up, one going one way, one going the other way. That's what your body's doing with the white blood cells uh, and displacing the oxygen molecules because 
The oxygen molecules can't fit on the pet with all those ants. The typical amount. Your body needs a certain percentage. Okay. And so what they do is they talk about potassium for this way. Sometimes I got to go down that road with everybody to make sure. It's so important that people who don't know any better and are coming through these episodes and are, are becoming astute and articulate are picking up these nuances. And sometimes I just got to, you know, meander my way through that stuff. Data shows a large spike in deaths, particularly infant deaths, in the 14 weeks following the Fukushima meltdowns in North America. There's 22,000 American that died of heart attacks was an abnormality in North America. But what was happening in Japan was a media blackout. And so I just wanted to run through some of that to, to try to lay some foundations for you. And another one for you to take into consideration is 3 million children required treatment because of Chernobyl, Kafiana, 2000. And many will die prematurely, but all of them will be a burden to their loved ones. It, but not a burden, burden, like you got a sick child, you got a sick child. And that's not, it's not a burden to that parent. They will do whatever it takes. They will sacrifice everything they got. They will liquidate their assets. And that is happening in Japan at an accelerated rate at this stage. And we're just about to jump into it. But in comparison, Chernobyl was only a 30% meltdown. In comparison, Chernobyl was one third the size of any of the reactors of Japan. In comparison, Chernobyl stopped after 10 days, but yet there was 3 million children. So what is the possibilities of just knowing only what you know now, not seeing another single one of my episodes, never understanding anything about this topic whatsoever, in good faith taking my word for it, even though I'm providing the data, the information, the documentations as I talk. Can you get any better than that? Tell me who it is, and I'm going to run over there and elect your boats. Lick, 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 boats, and going to elect your... It's not a bad thing. What? I would love to find somebody out there I could do that for. Oh, you all massa. You all great massa. I can't find anybody out there that I can worship, that I can trust. And if that is not frightening. And I only say that in, in the context of somebody I can admire. I shouldn't use the word worship. Now, it's only because I was doing this that I brought up that word. But somebody that I can admire, somebody that I can say, okay, definitively, they're telling me the truth. But they're not only telling me the truth, they're telling me the whole truth. And I don't care if they got your degree at the worst college on the planet. And I don't care if they got it at the best college on the planet. I care that they're honest and that they told me the truth and that I'm able to use that as a foundation for a conversation or a debate. <coughs> Chuck says maybe crying gets rid of reds. If you're around long enough, you become immune to a toe. Yeah. And you hear a fall, but it's okay. It'll grow back. And so there's all of those conjectures you'll hear out there of people looking for some kind of tangible, you know, something they can hang on to, cling to. Unfortunately, we deal with the realities here. We don't deal with conjectures. And I'm not pointing fingers at Chuck. Chuck just happened to look over and see Chuck's comment there. And Chuck ended up on the other end of the stick. And it wasn't hockey. Uh, but in comparison, let me see. Uh, just give me one second. I'll just play this in the background when I'm talking. Uh, so... This is a million Beckwolds coming out of Japan per square meter in North America. So how bad is Japan going to be? And I lost context of what Chuck said, and I can't even go find the clip I was looking for. So I'll just come back and keep going. Otherwise, i got to watch you because we only got an hour. I already done an hour this morning with Lonnie Clark. Nuts for Art. That was an awesome show. I really, really appreciate Connie, uh, Connie, Lonnie, how articulating she can be. Just an amazing soul. Uh, just wonderful people that is stuck to the topics, dealt with real issues, talked about pertinent subjects because we're limited to the time, kept the, kept the, kept the show moving, kept it alive, and done everything right. And that's all you can do. You can't do any more than that. It's so hard to find people, though. 
uh, that are trying like that. And that's why I have to mention Lani. And like I mentioned Miss Milky all the time because she doesn't stop. And everybody else below my video. So right now we're seeing about hot particles from Fukushima coming to the US. Uranium plutonium finally gets mentioned. Inhaling just one radioactive hot particle can cause a cancer. Columbia Medical Professor. Okay, now I know what I want to mention. The boy came over here. And everybody probably at this stage who knows me knows what I'm going to bring up here in a second. You know what I'm going to show you. Do you know how twisted it is what I'm going to show you? The problem with me is oh, I got too much and I add more every day to this bunch of documentations. I actually got imported, but I can also export. I can go out to YouTube and play a live stream while I'm doing this if I wanted to. So I have all the, all kinds of neat features. This is Dr. Raymond Gilmady, right quick. Blurp, blurp. Gilmady, and I, I show these two in context all the time because that's how you could find him later. Go look him up and read through his 94 studies on beagle dogs and beagle puppies. And so he's still killing the beagle dogs and beagle puppies from inhaling plutonium and americium neptunium. But look at the second line. Tumors of the lung, skeletal, and liver occurred beginning about three years after exposure. 94 studies showing that. But I got to put up with people out there telling me it's not, it's not, oh, it's not going to kill very many people, Dana. But yeah, I just showed you headlines of everybody breeding hot particles, of hot particles raining out of entire countries, and that doctors showing you that a single atom will cause cancers. Do you think you breed in a single atom at 1,500 a cubic meter? like California was getting, and that these studies showed that uh, bone tumors, uh, deaths uh, began after about three years, but bone tumors found in 93 dogs were the most common cause because of plutonium that they were using these experiments in americium and neptunium. The liver tumors were found in 20 dogs, lung tumors in 48 dogs. So, we're, like, I don't talk about fruit flies. I don't talk about bananas. I talk about real, real studies. That actually still ongoing on dogs and puppies. You couldn't get any more twisted than that. But there it is. Go prove me wrong. Prove those studies are not real. Prove that all the documentation that I show you constantly is not real. Prove this guy is not right. Prove Dr. Gilmetty didn't kill all those dogs at the same time. And so shows effects of plutonium on the lung tissue. Single particle. So imagine when you're breeding in five or ten hot particles every day. Imagine being in Japan where you're inundated constantly, endlessly. And that's Canada. Hang on. And so let me go back to the kids for a little bit more. 5,000 becquels a kilogram and no decontamination. So 5,000 cancers. 5 million cancers. Um, yeah, I agree with Shanik and Chuck crying is part of it, but I know what Chuck was saying and, and I took that out of context to use it for another thing and that was probably wrong and my apologies. Local official, 5 million becquels a kilogram, no decontamination. We can't eat the food grown here. So if you've got a carrot, and it's got five atoms into it, distributed out evenly through the carton. You chop it up into five pieces, and five people eat one atom each. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25 years down the road, they're going to have a serious cancer, autoimmune deficiencies. Or 1,800 medical issues, including diabetics. Because it's in your body, and it's pulsing every second. Pulsing. Whacking away at your DNA, whacking away at your chromosome, whacking away at your organs with energy that's exciting everything. Like, you know how your cell phone excites your brain after two minutes, your brain starts getting hotter. Think about the radiation in your body, that's pure energy. If you put that in a glass of water, it heats up the glass of water. And so everything that that is in Japan is contaminated, the entire infrastructure. 10 million becquels a kilogram of cesium in a soil sample? A kilogram. So multiply a kilogram times nine, and that's basically how you get a square meter where your kid has stood up to. 
So it's 90 million becquels in a square meter in Minnesota. I almost said it right that time. Hi, oh, shit, 6 million becquels a kilogram of black substance. 523. See, it should never be measured in microsievers. That's how they confuse you. Always measured in becquels. So you know how many atoms are there. Trying to convert microsievers to atoms of different energies is very difficult. And that's why they like to take you down that road to confuse you. But 174,000 counts per minute is the most frightening thing per, uh, imaginable. Six million becquels in a kilogram? This kind of material, you only need to ingest a single atom of it as you walk and boy it. That's being liberated through eva evaporation or convection or with rain or with fog or with snow. Cesium detecting urine of Fukushima infants. And so Tokyo professor, and I covered that one already, definitely has no effect on the human body. So we covered these headlines yesterday. Let's move up. I made a mistake. Let's bang into these headlines. Uh, newly Fukushima footage from 311 can no longer force my employees to continue many received high radiation doses. So he knows there are dead people walking. Because there was women there, and so i got to watch it when I'm saying men. U.S. Japan reports five persons have received lethal doses in the first five days. There's a street in Fukushima where seven people died, dropped dead. Just let me run back to that for a second. Uh, worker has heart attack We're working on Unit 1, only 31 years old. Radiation around Fukushima near levels where human vomit uncontrollably in hair can be stripped from your body, killing the cells, every cell. These are dead because it exploded and threw the rods everywhere up to two miles away. And pieces have been found up to 100 miles away. Tokyo nuclear cloud crisis. Well, the parent daughter of plutonium is a gas. And so these clouds that come through Tokyo was like solidified pieces be walking past that in many senses of the way. It just takes longer for those effects to, to show up. But they're not going to report them. And you'll see why in a little tiny bit here. Two high school students die in the same school at once. Japanese discuss personal health problems. Seven people die on a particular shopping street in the Fukushima prefecture. But, but, you know, there were heart attacks, which is cesium attacks your heart right away. Cesium was a major part of the releases, but, you know, because that's what all we hear about. But cesium wasn't really. The, the reactor is 97% uranium. Now, cesium is a byproduct of uranium. So cesium is uranium in many senses. Before, because it, it doesn't exist in nature in that capacity. It does exist in nature, but it's not harmful or anything like that. And it's very hard to accumulate into a, a, a even a vial. It's an amazing amount of money to get a vial of it naturally, but it's not harmful to you unless you were to ingest it to refine. But in its natural form, out there can hurt you. It's like potassium. At least for ambulances were coming here 10 times a day in Japan. The releases were going throughout the country every day, all day. And this is these headlines are the manifestation of the releases. Uh, January 17, 2012, another Fukushima cleanup worker dies cloud, uh, after removing radioactive soil. Birds unable to fly around Fukushima. Top Tokyo doctor dealing with the nuclear workers demand government step into Fukushima. Some are unable to read. You won't find Harvard at Fukushima. Call Harvard up and say, we want you to send your top dogs down there now. Gotta watch it because I'll start yelling in a second. Fukushima workers filmed at the plant underage people, fake documents. Cesium immediately damages the heart muscle. That's why we see seven dead on one street. Fireman dies after working in Fukushima after the quake. 40% of the Fukushima visitors showed internal exposure to radiation. 40%. Now, if you don't even understand why that is, think about all of the stricken reactors and spent fuel pools contain plutonium. And it would be like Chernobyl on steroids to spent fuel pool caught fire. Well, he did. We covered that in episode, pilot episode, episode one, episode two, and episode three. The caught fire blew up, caught fire blew up, caught fire blew up, lost your inventory, caught fire blew up. 
boom, boom, ba boom, boom, boom. And so the reason that they done that is because they had a massive, unimaginable tsunami burn through their country. And the reactors were all broken apart by the earthquake. Then the tsunami came through. So this tsunami, and I'll play a few moments of it here for you. This is the original footage of it coming in. And boom, boom. Now the next one comes across on top of that. The next one is riding on top of that at 600 miles an hour. And in moments, 500 miles of coastline is going through a wood chipper. But the nuclear power plants are fine, Dana. No, oh, we put extra cement in them, Dana, and rebar. And so they're not starting up nuclear power plants on the coastline because they all melted down. Images were taken from a but they hit it away from you. This took out 500 miles of the coast. So all the reactors that they're trying to open are thinking about opening on the other side of the coastline. Or inland. Yeah? Yeah. And so the stuff that was on the coastline was chewed up and spit out. And they hid it away from you. This is why Japan is such an important topic, because they are being destroyed. They have been manipulated and deceived and chastised. And you have to go back through the last couple of episodes to really to get a hang of some of that. But I just want to, uh, see, I have to bring this in there to show people, so people can really understand the enormity of what I am saying and the honesty and the, the factual proof of what I'm saying is right here and is well documented that the entire coastline, 500 miles, where most of the reactors to, was destroyed just like everything you see here. But they're really good at hiding it from you because the nuclear industry does not want to give it up easy. They're a trillion dollars a year and their whole history is predicated up on lies of potato chips and bananas and walking in sunshine and getting on an airplane and dental x-rays. And they have come to fruition and they can't bury it anymore and they can't stand the thought of their friends and their families and their loved ones not being able to look at them in the eye in the very near future and and they are not able to look them in the eye because the lies have been spanning for their entire existence their whole facade is based upon you loving their lies and appreciating their lies and, and licking up their lies and not questioning them not saying hey wait a second how come we have nuclear waste sites if it's like a banana? Hey, wait a second. How come we have terrorist laws if it's like potato chips? Nobody really thinks about these, you know, little minutias. So within one day, complete meltdown, melter occurred, and there was no way the government did not notice. But hey, if they told you that, people would be angry and attack them, and they wouldn't have any pensions on top of that, and they would lose the trust of their loved ones, their friends, their relatives, their parents, their neighbors, their community, their students, their, uh, you know, their, their, their workers, the cleaners, the people where they go and eat. They would lose respect and they would have no confidence that they would understand all of a sudden that everybody, even strangers looking at them, might know they were nuclear scientists. They, they carry that shame their whole life. And so they have to bury it. The walls are cracked below the ground from the earthquake. The earthquake picked up the whole country and shook it like a blanket for six minutes. It ran through the country at 9,000 miles an hour. The epic center was right off the Fukushima plant. The buildings in Tokyo were swaying. Supermarkets crashed. Uh, there's just endless documentation of the devastation. The earthquake was felt right around the continents, the, the Pacific Rim nations. Super critical fission event. Now they were using mixed oxides fuel. Explosion was so massive, investigators found fuel fragments a mile away because plutonium burns up to 200,000 times hotter. But plutonium that's reclaimed and uranium that's reclaimed from missile silos burns a hell of a lot hotter again. That's why they were always changing the shrouds on these things because they were cracking. And ultimately, this, we were always headed for this moment. China syndrome might have just happened at Fukushima times, as if they got any credibility, but at least they come out with that headline. You should go read the other headlines they put out since. Shocking. 
the beer, the cover up is just endless. Molten fuel may have, may have. They can't come out and say he did. So they always say those words, may have. <laughs> Melted through everything. Look, it's 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. We can't build anything to contain 5,000. And so how could it not melt out? Rocks will melt at 2,000. How could it not melt through? Why do you think they have the China syndrome theory anyway? It's because it gets so hot it melts, nothing else can it's get out of the way or be burnt. It goes through everything. It'll melt out of the containment unit at around 1,800. What's it going to do at 9,000? Huh? Government, paper shows meltdown of Fukushima was predicted on the day of the quake. Well, in the first 50 days, they made 5,500 speedy models with, with the taxpayers' money and the taxpayers' equipment and taxpayers' pensions that they, they and the paychecks they're getting, but they didn't show it to the Japanese population. They fuddle it, and then they show that, ah, went out to sea. See? Government reports suggest it's the worst thing possible. June 8, 2011. But yet Jay Cullen is out there still today. Oh, no, it's okay. No, no, a little bit out there. Well, it's not like Chernobyl. Chernobyl's, t you know, ten times worse. That's what Jay Cullen is saying from you, Vic, British Columbia, Canada. What are you going to do about it, huh? You're going to call up you, Vic, and scream at the dean because he hired him. He don't care. You can't even get to him. He's isolated anyway, insulated. That's why they do what they do. Worse than a melt through, melt out. Okay, let me keep going. All fuel is melted through, and 40% of the people that went to the visitors went through the hospital. By June the 2nd, 2011, we're showing high, high numbers. You had to have high numbers to show up. Does that mean a, a, a single atom is not a problem? No. Everybody in Japan is marked for death. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. They got the worst doses. But I mean, Canada and North America is vicious what they've done to us. The jet streams come straight here in three days. The ocean comes here in 45 days, across the current five miles an hour, 24 hours a day. In 45 days, do the math. Five times 24 times 45. You'll get 5,500 miles, M-I-L-E-S. Over 1,000 nuclear workers are dead men walking. If they had one count per minute from Fukushima, they're dead people walking. One count per minute, they'll be seeing a doctor in 10, 15 years and spending huge amounts of money on treatment. What's 10,000 going to do to them? Huh? You sick and twisted, demented PR firms out there watching me right now? Do the world a favor and jump out that window. If you're in a skyscraper, getting ready to type a comment, and, and disparage somebody concerned about this, do the world a favor, jump out of the building, get your cronies to videotape it, and they will because they're disgusting, demented, mental illness people anyway. Put it up on YouTube so I can enjoy it. Over and over and over. I'll use it as the ringer on my phone, your screams. Ah! Every time I see headlines like this, I hate you just 10,000 times more. After working in an affected area, four workers have died. No, nobody died in Fukushima, Dana, you fear monger. Right there, they're saying that all the time, too. Anybody says it to you uh, from the industry, the proper response is to break your chair off over their head before security arrests you. And then you took one for the team, and we love you for that. Every time you take away their power, every time you take away their ability to lie, we win. Every time you, you hold them accountable, every time you get in their face, even if they don't respond to you, we win. If a million people called up you, Vic, tomorrow Jay Cullen wouldn't be an issue no more, would he? And the next guy would be pretty fucking worried about what he's saying. Apologize for using blasphemy. Report indicated five Fukushima workers have most likely received a fatal dose. Pfft, that's fuck all. The whole country's radiated in morons. They can't report on that. Ah, oh, five people got a fatal dose. They're going to die within days or weeks. See, I'm starting to get mad. I apologize again. Urgh. 
I can't believe I just done that. Workers died by decommissioning in Fukushima. Well, who cares? Wasn't your kid, was it? Extreme increases of mortality caused by cardiac disease in Fukushima. It's all in Japan, though. Death rates might give the creeps. Might. Might. And what were the death rates? It was like 1,200 excess deaths or something. 12.5%. Yeah, 12,000. Compared to the same month of the year before. No, deaths in Fukushima. You can't prove nothing, Dana. They died from walking, watching Pokemon. They had seizures. And the number of deaths caused by malignant, which is not caused by seizures, 2,066. And by cardiac, 2,500. Up, up, up. But no, Dana. This is January 28. There's no fix, Dana. Conspiracy theorists. Fukushima, the actual worker, died. Had been parent cover for a number three. I said three. You say three. I say three. 40% dead men walking, dead children walking, dead adults walking, dead moms and dads walking, dead aunts and uncles walking. Japanese government looking for kamikaze decontamination workers. Send us those who don't, don't mind dying. Just don't ask them. Hey, I got it. Let's go get all the homeless. So if anybody comes up with the idea in the near future, they're going to be out of a job because there ain't no homeless left in Japan. They got them all. And now they're going after the migrants coming in who don't speak the, the Japanese language. Oh, yeah, you will make a hundred dollar. You come with that now. We pay you good. You go time. You enjoy your long time. You long time. We give you free sandwiches. Free Kofajima. Price back show. Whoa, you like rice? Oh, we got a lot of rice. We can't ship it out. Good rice, though. Good. I feed it to my last walker. Sit up. I say sit up. He's okay. He's faking it. Looking for more dollar. And I'm, I'm just mimicking the torturous conditions these people are living in. I stab you now. You don't work. You pick up your rod. I stab you. They're, that's what they're up against. They got the Yakuza's are down there. That's who's picking up all the homeless. And you say no, you're allowed to get beat to death on the side of the road so all the other homeless will walk by and say, oh, I guess I'm going to work tomorrow morning too. Japanese medical experts deeply concerned about children's radiation exposure. It's not too bad. Only 51% of the kids are contaminated. I don't see what the big fuss is about. It's like bananas, potato chips. Right, Jay Cullen? Right, Kent Bisler? Right, mainstream media? Right, insert your name right here to whoever it is talking about Fukushima. Hey, it's James Colbert. Fukushima update. I got a website to keep you informed, but there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> I don't know why people are talking about it, so I decided to start up a website and spend all my time working on it, writing articles and making videos, because there's nothing to worry about. And people may be worried in the future, so I said, I better start up a website in case people get worried. I wasn't sure because there's nothing to worry about. I'm James Colbert. I'm the Colbert Report. But I decided I was going to... That's James Colbert. Here's a guy who says in conversation, not or nothing there, but he's got a site called Fukushima Update. I got a site called nuclearproctologist.org. And it's got me warmed down just trying to keep up with it. But no, no, James Colbert, he's going to start it up one just in case. And he feeds you Ken Buesler and Jay Cullen. And anybody related to them from Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution is the PR firm for every environmental event on the planet. That's who goes in and covers it up, is Woods Hole. Every... Like B BP oil spill, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. Ah, oh, the car wrecks will be fine. 911, ah, oh, the dust in New York is fine. Every event, Woods Hole. And so Fukushima is no different. And the media won't talk to anybody on the Woods Hole, J. Colin, Ken Buesler. Do you think this is an accident? Huh? Do ya? You really want to go after the head of the beast? You got to take down Woods Hole. Everybody in it. Everybody that's ever worked for it. Everybody that even visited is suspect. That's that is our that is our. If you want a target to lock your missiles in on, it's Woods Hole. You want to dedicate your life to taking down evil. They all emanate from Woods Hole. How ironic is that? Yeah. Do you think that's an accident? No. Eight hundred and fifty scientists 
lots of nuclear scientists, and he sent us Jay Cullen and Ken Buesler, marine chemist. And we're talking about nuclear meltdowns. Yeah, no, they're good. Trust me. Radiation and health specialists. Children with over 11 beckles a kilogram starts to see heart problems. Hang on. Hang on. Hold everything. Hang on, I'm stalling. I'm making it up too as I go along. Boop, boop. Hello, Tokyo! So there's more than 11 beckles a kilogram. Yeah? Yeah, more than 11 beckles a kilogram? Am I still alive? Who knows with me? Yeah, I'm still going. So more than 11 beckles a kilogram? True, thick country. Uh huh. And so this was originally, this is on the 22nd of March. And so you can see radiation right through the roof all over the country right away. That's from Google, radiation reports. And so here's a pretty little picture. <laughs> 31st March 2011, not only is Japan, Japan, Japan completely radiated, uh, so is all the surrounding territories, and so is North America and South America and everywhere else. Right around the entire planet, over and over and over, every 40 days, right around this entire planet. But Japan, all the heaviest stuff that would fall out in a short distance when the winds are blowing across Japan, uh, these people are digging it up and putting it in incinerators, lugging it to the other side of Japan because they couldn't make it on its own. And burning it so they get their doses too. It's important everybody uh, enjoy their doses. Their, their last. I mean, can you get any more evil or not? 5,000 nuclear plant workers suffering, 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 suffering internal radiation exposure after visiting, 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 after visiting, visiting. Fukushima. <laughs> local government, like, uh -huh. well, we might teach, we might check the the local government's kids for radiation. We should move the government's kids out. They're not talking about that's the residents. That's residents is key words for government friends, not residents. The homeless go to Fukushima. The government's kids go to the other end of the country, and everybody stays there as a grand experiment. You think I'm lying? You think I'm making it up? You think I'm guessing? You better think again. See, but but his wife set herself on fire, and at the same time, we're like, no, there's no problem. Radiation can't hurt you. You're just fear mongering, heartless, utter heartless. <coughs> so if eleven beckles a kilogram can hurt your child permanently. What's uh, ninety-five thousand counts a minute going to do? I wonder. Okay, hang on. Let's come back. Let's see what we got going over in the corner. Now, most of these models were right away, and they don't cover all the reactors. They don't cover the spent fuel pool. They don't cover the meltdowns. They only cover short releases. Um, and so purple, right at the bottom of the scale, Right? See how dramatically do that? Ah, it's purple. See the red? 500. It should be 500,000. Now, that's a kilogram. Uh, that's a Beckwell's per meter square is what they're saying. Of iodine 131, there's 10 times more iodine 132. It's not in that model. That's just iodine 131. And to show you iodine 131 because it has an 8-day half-life. And that's times 10, so that's 80 days. But there's 10 times more iodine 132, 30 times more 133, 31 times more iodine 129. Now the 129, 31 times for every single iodine 131 created was 31 iodine 129. They have a 15 million year half life. And so this was just a single few hours dispersal. And they say March 11th to the 29th, 
do anybody really believe any of that? Uh, they don't include all the reactors. They don't include the ongoing releases. They don't don't include the the heavy dispersals. Just like this model we showed there the other day. I'm just gonna stop. See, I was swept. See, I was swept up to the, the the lower end of the country, right to the north end of the country. Now it's good. Now it's out to the ocean. Swept up to the north end again. That's huge swaths of land. Anyway, wait. This is just a. This is just a um, 2011 to 15th. That's that by hours, right? So just a couple of days is all they're showing you. This is a modeling. And uh, IRS and that's Switzerland's model. That's not Japanese. That's the Switzerland model you're looking at. And so now it kind of loses its intensity. Now detonation or something on the 19 caused a massive plume to come out. Yeah. At around uh, 1800 hours, 1900 hours. And by the 20th of March, they're, they're speculating that that plume was uh, smaller. Now that on the 22nd of March, they're showing a big plume again. Did you see that? At uh, around uh, 21st, around midnight, they showed a big plume. Look at the big plume now on the 22nd, uh, 2011. See the big red plume down there? Right, so, so Switzerland's model, IRSN's model, uh, and Tokyo is right here. You can see Tokyo was burnt over and over and over in the model. You only needed that once, just to swing around once. But it's been doing this now for four and a half years. But let's go back and look at that one big one again when it came out. The big blurp blurp. Hang on. Boom. Look at that. On the 14th. That's unit 3, I guess. Unit 3 blew up on March the 14th, right? So look at this thing. It's gone to North America. The particles are one ten thousandth of a millionth of a meter. And we know that showed up in North America. We got modeling of it. But it didn't stop coming out of there, despite what you're seeing in that little short clips. That's what it, it sustained 5,000 miles across the ocean at a million beckles a square meter. And we're going to cover that next week anyway. Let's get back and finish on Japan. We're down to eight minutes left. I've probably been kicked offline the whole time. The video is probably only six minutes long when it renders and comes back up. And everybody was yelling at me and I didn't look. Uh, and that's a story we've had before. Japan, oh Japan. So all of Japan was crazy. Hang on a second. So once again, they take the debris that they decontaminated, they bring it to another prefecture and then they burn it. In the incinerators, you can't destroy the isotope. It's already created in the bowels of hells, and we don't know of any technology to destroy it. And so tomorrow, we're going to get into a lot of the tsunami material on Japan and more radiation on Japan. And tonight, I'll sit there and do up a, a real good show for the moral about that to keep so I'm not jumping around too much because I know that confuses. It's easy for me because this is. I do this all the time, but for a lot of people, it needs to come out in a little bit. For what I want to do with the moral anyway, about the tsunami and that, how I want to break all that down. And we see Nuts for Arts is in the comment section there. That's Lonnie Clark, anybody knows. And I she'll put she'll probably put that interview up at her site, Nuts for Art. And she can correct me if I'm wrong. And I'm going to come in and say hi to everybody here in a second. Japan to burn unprocessed radioactive waste waste from the nuclear accident. So they're going to take the waste, not not pick out the rods, because you can't. Because a rod, if you took a rod where there's 1,500 people in the theater, you would kill everybody in the front row in a minute and everybody in the back row in 20 minutes. And every 20 minutes you can exterminate the entire planet at, at 1,500 people a pop. I always say 300, but we've seen other examples where people talk about 1,500 talking to 1,500 chiropractors and they tell them that everybody in the front row is dead in a minute and everybody in the back row is dead in 20 with a pound of this stuff. And so that's why tomorrow all the tsunami and everything. But I got another, like I've done a radio show this morning. We've done the live stream right now and I got another radio show um, coming up anyway in about 40 minutes. And so I'm just going to come in and say goodnight to everybody or good day to everybody. 
so I can go over and get set, take a break, get a cup of tea, get my vocals back to normal before I do another radio interview. The radio interview, um, and that's with um, I can't remember his name now. Whatever, but it's a good radio interview. And so you can find my videos of Beautiful Girl by Dana on YouTube. And YouTube is the only site on the internet that streams well. And it's a free site. And it's and everybody's familiar with it. Everybody knows how to use it. Everybody can find you. It's functional. Kind of. And so come over there to YouTube. Click on live streams. And then you'll get this page. And each night I post about 10 hours before the live stream. Deer in the corner. And that's live right now. We'll say live right below it if I was to refresh the page. But anyway, you click that, and there'll be a countdown timer calibrated to your computer. So if your computer has the correct time and date, right? Make sure the date on your computer is correct and the time on your computer is correct. And then the time on my countdown will be in relationship to where you are, to what the calibration is on your computer. So, uh, anyway, and so you can go over to the nuclearproctologist.org. That's my site. And we're going to start taking donations uh, immediately now for a $12,000 TriCaster, $1,500 worth of lights to go with that. And what that is, is like what CNN or MSNBC or BBC uses for broadcasting. And so I can import five people into the studio in perfect uh, sync with no misery and be able to have all the bells and whistles uh, and real, really amazing audio even if it's a cell phone they call me up I'll put them through the Adobe of the TriCaster and their voice will be really rich and you'll be able to get all the nuances of that interview or that question that they got for their call in and so I want to move this to a full-time stage is what I'm saying and I'm gonna I need donations to do that and that's a lot of money to raise and it's gonna take time and so as we haven't raised anything since we started this and so this new part of what we're doing. Well, I mean, we've done this expedition, what I'm showing you right now, was enormously expensive, time-consuming. 260 days on the ocean we spent out there documenting the tidal zones ourselves. We didn't wait for someone to go do it. We went and done it. I went and done it. And that context, because that's what everybody was asking for somebody to please go do something, for someone to please go look, for someone to please be honest for someone to please go out and bring us back the documentation, let us see it ourselves. And so that's what I done, decided to do, but I can't do it by myself. And so everybody on this planet helped me do that. And some have sacrificed it all to get it done. And that's what we're doing now. That's why we exist is because we proved through our documentation uh, that is a total devastation of the coastline. That's the GPS of uh, Sitka, uh, Stephens Islands. That's the front page today. If you scroll down, you'll see all the pictures uh, down here also. You can click on anything. Uh, the pictures above it, there's 200 pictures. And it's showing you there's no life left in the tidal zones, the very nursery of the ocean. And I'll be covering the ocean next week. And then these are all sections. Now, the top of the page all the way down, there's a 1,000 pictures on each of these pages from expeditions. You can see, look at a mutated starfish in that one. And so today it's in section two. You find section two over here. And as you come down, these are the recent expeditions. These are 200, pay, 200 pictures on a page. And each page will look like the page, like this page here, where you got all the pictures, the big pictures. And at the bottom of it, you got a whole bunch of headlines to help you get context and use it for a conversation with your friends, your families, your loved ones, or during these types of debates. Just so that everybody can find me and keep in contact with me and get this into their heads and understand that there's an extinction event playing out in the Pacific Ocean and that we're flushing it all out in episodes from beginning all the way to present. And so it's going to take around three months to tell that story in episodes. And so I'll be gone five days a week, 10.30 a.m. Pacific Canada time, British Columbia time. I always say British Columbia just to give people more context of where I'm to right now. I'm in Powell River, British Columbia, Canada. And uh, this, you know, this event is real. This really, truly did happen. The people out there are really, truly lying about it. 
there are communities and countries that do not have internet, do not have the knowledge, do not have the ability that we have, do not have the, the foresight that we have, do not have the luxuries that we have that also need to know and that are being denied and that we have to take into consideration and that it is our watch to make sure that they are informed and that they are considered and that they are spoken for if they can't speak for themselves. And I don't see them speaking for themselves. And the impoverished have no knowledge of any of this. And that we are the privileged ones. We are by far, in every extent of the word, I'm Canadian, extraordinarily privileged. It's just because I'm Canadian. Even if I was homeless, I'd still be extraordinarily privileged to be a Canadian. I have just abundance of everything around me. And it, it'll be my own choosing for anything I do without. The abundance is, is amazing. Everybody else on this planet doesn't have these luxuries. But I also have freedom of speech. I also have the ability and and the, the, the drive and the understanding that most people don't have the freedom I have. Most people can't speak with the convictions that I have because they, they are living in a place where they'll be attacked where they'll be tortured, where they'll be kidnapped, where they'll, they will be uh, eradicated for being any kind of opposition to the industries. In Canada, I don't necessarily, because I get a lot of death threats, but I don't necessarily, I come from, in other words, I come from a place where I'm the last person who should keep quiet. And because I've already lived extremely fulfilling and, and uh, free life without, uh, reservations and I'm extraordinarily privileged and so that I don't take the chance that most people would in, in the context of the chances that anybody else in anywhere any other country would take to come out and have this conversation because I'm Canadian I was able to get to at least this point right I, and I, I understood that from the get-go and so it was my obligation to be the guy who who pushed who ran in that direction you know, originally, and then as people got educated and be, and understand the urgency, uh, their convictions w would carry them too. So, uh, not sure, Richie, and I'm going to jump over to the actual stream because we don't even know if this streamed out today. And I say good night, good day to everybody. If I can get that to work proper. There, yeah, it doesn't like it. And so I clicked on the wrong thing. Give me one second. And that didn't work the way I expected it to work. Let me try one more view on watch page. Ba boom! Gotcha. Well, I didn't want to take up the bandwidth, right? We don't even know if this stream do. Okay, so there I am. Good night. Good day, everybody. Albert, Gary, Nusra, once again, I'll count on Lonnie to put a blurb out there of the interview when she gets around to posting it, if she gets around to posting it. Paul, Jimmy, Miss Milky. Thank you, Miss Milky. Hugs for you, sweetie, and Warren. Candace and Kate. Thank you, Kate. In case got the Fukushima Hounds website below. Miss Milky you'll find below. Many people below. Except for Nuts for Art. I still haven't got her below yet. And so just let me rectify that right here this second. Let me go find Lani. Hopefully. Uh-huh. Open you in another window. And then I'll grab your URL. I'll just make sure it's not going to take up this stream because you got a video playing on your front page. Okay, let me get rid of that because it'll burn to our stream on, with the extra bandwidth. That's gone. So now I'll have Lonnie link below after it'll show up from here on out. And uh, let me come back down. Candace, uh, we know Elaine uh, was sitting back listening, but she joined it in. Thanks, Elaine. Shani again, 775. It was Elaine. Joe. Um... I'm just trying to catch names as it's going through here. And so Brian, we're just thinking that the show's over. Water Chile, Ricky, Joe Bob. Um, and so I'm just looking for any names before LA, the names before I'm um, gone off the stream here. Sylvia, John Doe's. 
And Candace, I already say, I think, but just in case, Bob, you can never say enough. And I can never thank people enough. And I can never impress on people enough that what we do is the moral and ethical thing. What we do is because we are left with no options and that we are forced to do this. And that I'm sure nobody wants to do this. I'm 100% I'm positive that everybody would rather be doing anything but this. And we're doing it because we flushed it out and it's real. We, and we went out on the ocean after covering 9,000 headlines. And so we never just went, ran out on the ocean and said, Fukushima, I'm going to go look. No, we had 9,000 headlines before we even considered it, right? And so that was the next stage. And what we're doing now, going after the TriCaster, is the next stage of everything else we've already done. And so you can donate at the nuclearproctologist.org through credit cards or PayPal, Dana Durnford at Hotmail.com. You'll find the information below the video. And I'll, I'm going to have to start pushing for that stuff because we're never going to get it at the rate we're going now. We raised $20 in the last four weeks. It's time for me to start pushing. And we, we got to do it. And so I'll never stop until I got it done. And, even, and then it's just endless work for me. It's 10 times more work for me once I get it on top of that. And I'm looking forward to it. Hugs for everybody. Take care, folks. I'm going to get ready for the next radio interview. I'll find a link uh, later for that, too, hopefully, when he posts it. Richie Allen's show. There you go. See, I know I'll come up with it at some point. Take care, folks. <laughs>